let's talk about the Bill Belichick reach, so to speak. Bill Belichick kind of become known now for taking a bit of a reach here and there, taking someone who many people did not have that high of a grade on. And I also figured with him now finally uh, cutting ties with Nikhil Harry, which wasn't a massive reach, it's kind of a good way to talk about just his first round selections in general and kind of the, uh, you know, also some second round selections and talk about uh, the success or maybe lack of success that has happened. So that's what we're going to be doing. And then I'll also talk sort of at the end about kind of why I think Bill Belichick still has been successful these past several years in his entire career in New England, but really even these past couple of years about like last year, they were successful without Brady. You can't say he's a product of Brady. I'm going to talk about all of that. But let's first just get into the, the notable early picks. So right off the bat, these are not every, uh, you know, first or second round pick, but these are every first round pick along with the notable second round picks as well. And I wanted to talk about, you know, some picks that were potentially, you know, overdrafts, at least in terms of the projection and also just, uh, you know, some interesting picks in general. So we'll start at the top. We're going in, you know, I guess reverse chronological order. So from most recent to least recent at the top, Cole Strange, who was projected to go 89th, actually went 29th. So, a you know, a big jump there. Belichick very high on Cole Strange. The consensus best player available at that point was George Karloftis. And also the other draft pick from then was Tyquan Thornton, who was projected to go 130th, actually went 50th. So those are the two kind of notable reaches the Patriots had. N'Kobe Dean would have been the consensus best player available. But who actually knows, you know, what who's going to be better, right? How can you tell which guy is going to be better? You don't know. And one of the things that a lot of people have brought up is, listen, Belichick has earned the benefit of the doubt. Well, let's talk about if he has earned that or not by continuing to go. So Mac Jones was not a reach. He was projected to go 13th. He actually went 15th. So he actually fell a couple of spots and he was the consensus best player available at that point. So, you know, Belichick falling in line with what the general public believed on that one. Kyle Duggar, though, was a bit of a reach. At 55 was his projection. He went at 37. So he did go, you know, roughly just a little under 20 spots earlier than many expected him to. Kristen Fulton, who's been pretty good. He's been solid for the Titans. He was the best consensus best player available. Kyle Duggar probably been a little better. So I would definitely put this as a win for Belichick in terms of a reach. You have Nikhil Harry over uh, what the consensus best player available would have been, which is Jawan Taylor. Nikhil Harry actually was right on the money. He was projected to go 32nd. He went 32nd, so no big difference there. And for Isaiah Wynn, you have, you know, he was projected to go 25th. He actually went 23rd, so I'm not going to call it out of reach. It's only a couple of spots, although certainly Calvin Ridley probably would rather have him than Isaiah Wynn, but again... Uh, you know, at least I would rather have Calvin Ridley than Isaiah win. Nikhil Harry versus Jawan Taylor, to me, that feels like a push. Like, neither one have really worked out. Nikhil Harry is, you know, off the Patriots, but, like, would Jawan Taylor still be on the Patriots? I don't know. So, uh, either way, you know, that wouldn't have mattered too much. Finally, Sony Michelle, the other notable second rounder I put on here. I guess he was a first rounder, actually, uh, a late first rounder. He was projected to be a, a second rounder. This was kind of another, probably the other reach of, not a massive reach, 11 spots, but a bit of a reach here for the Patriots, uh, whereas Harold Landry was the consensus best player available, who some people really like. There's kind of some uh, discouraging you know, underlying statistics with him that maybe you wouldn't love so much. But again, Sonny Michelle is no longer on the team, so you have to at least think Landry would be more valuable than that. So looking at this, I think it's fair to say that Belichick doesn't really reach that often. He will reach on occasion, but, you know, it's not a common thing. And we've certainly, at least not in the consensus big board era, we haven't seen him do something quite like this with Cole Strange and Tyquan Thornton. Now, we have seen maybe one small similarity where Logan Mankins back in 2005 was drafted late in the first round, similar to where Strange was drafted. He obviously went on to have a great career for the New England Patriots, although uh, worth mentioning, I have seen some places where I've gone back and looked at sort of old mock drafts, the best I could find. It's 2005. We didn't have the same stuff that we have 
from last year. There's no consensus big board back then or anything like that. But while I did see some people bashing the pick and saying he should have been drafted in the third round, I also saw some people saying he was their top rated guard. So there was at least a debate with him, whereas we didn't really see that at all with Strange or Tyquan Thornton. I think this list really comes down to, is it better or worse with the Belichick reaches in the first round of which group do you like better? Which would you rather have? You have Kyle Duggar, Nikhil Harry, Isaiah Wynn, and Sony Michelle, two of which are no longer on the Patriots, or Kristen Fulton, Jawan Taylor, Calvin Ridley, and Harold Landry. I don't think it's a massive jump either way, to be honest. I'd probably go with the group on the right, but it is naturally as crazy as you might expect. So what have we learned here? What is the lesson that we now know when it comes to Bill Belichick, when it comes to the Patriots and all of this stuff? Is it better to reach if you're someone like Belichick, who is obviously this legend of the game? Still probably no. It's still probably better to, uh, you know, if it's Belichick and you're still kind of talking about it as a push with a slight lean towards should have distract the best player available, still probably for the best to, if most people think a guy is a fringe top 100 uh, talent, maybe don't draft him with a top 50 pick, which the Patriots did you know, twice in that draft. Still seems like it's not the best idea. Again, uh, Kyle Duggar did work out, but I've also would, would say that I always make an exception for safeties. I think you should draft safeties in round two pretty frequently. In fact, I have an expression uh, during draft season that you should never let a day two go by without drafting at least one safety or wide receiver just because you can get so many good guys in rounds two and three. So that's kind of the main reason why I believe in that. Uh, so it's not surprising that, uh, you know, a safety might work there, whereas offensive linemen tend to not be the case. Now, again, in any one individual circumstance, it could be different, right? You can never say with, you know, definitively drafting Cole Strange will not work out. What you can say is that the process behind drafting Cole Strange probably isn't the right call unless Bill Belichick knows something I don't, which he does. <laughs> you know, he often knows things that I don't. Does he know something I don't with Cole Strange? Perhaps. Uh, but, you know, a lot of times he, I say, what is Belichick doing? And then I say, oh, that's what you're doing. Made sense. Uh, because he does you know, find ways to have success. And the main thing I think that Belichick does so good of a job at is he finds guys who are good at specific roles and he doesn't ask guys to be something they're not. This is something that you look at the best organizations across all of sports and what they constantly do is they don't try to change guys too much. You obviously, you know, you're going to develop guys, you're going to change them to some degree, but Belichick isn't taking, uh, you know, Tyquan Thornton and now expecting him to be, uh, you know, a complete route running guy. He's like, no, you're a speed guy. We want a speed guy, someone who can win on the outside. That's what we're going to use you for. That's what Belichick's scheme is to a T, and that's kind of how he's been able to have so much success in the NFL and why he continues to have success and why I'm not betting against him this next year because he can do that. So uh, again, still probably could have gotten Tyquan Thornton later, but it's this kind of line of thinking that allows him to have the success that he has of he's simply looking at who's going to be the best for his team instead of who's going to be just the best player overall and when you you know not just talk about the first and second round but talk about rounds one through seven it almost always gets him a ton of talent including with free agent signings I still think he probably could be better off in round one just drafting like the best player available and then rounds two through seven just you know having his logic that would probably be the best case scenario in that circumstance but uh again I get it. I get why he does it. And it certainly has worked out for him. Even if you want to say, oh, he had Brady. It's like, well, why has no other head coach had so many Super Bowl wins and so much success with an elite quarterback? Like, you know, clearly he's having a big part of it as well. And not just as a head coach, but as a GM. So, yeah, uh, that's kind of my thought with Bill Belichick. Kind of a fun video. What did you guys think of it? Let me know in the comments below. What were your thoughts on all of this? Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.